What's up, comic book fans? It's the Emerald Enthusiast of the Multiverse Musings Podcast Network. Here with a look at the Toy Biz 12-inch deluxe action figure of Venom. So this was a 2005 release. There was actually another version of this figure with different packaging. It actually said the Amazing Spider-Man on the front. And the figure also didn't have this blue wash that I'll talk about in a few minutes. But let's go ahead and take a look at the packaging. So here is the bottom front of the packaging. You can see the Spider-Man logo designs on each side. It says Toy Biz, 12-inch deluxe action figure, and of course, Venom. On both sides of the packaging, we get a smaller version of the name label in this red capsule design, as well as nice artwork of Spider-Man. On the bottom, we get a proof of purchase, a plethora of logos here, as well as the Toy Biz web address. On the back, we get some superb artwork of Venom. There's also a brief bio here. The bio says, never has Spider-Man faced a more vicious mass of mayhem than the super brute known as Venom. A man whose intense hatred for the wall crawler is matched only by that of the alien symbiote to which he's bonded. Venom possesses all of Spider-Man's powers and even greater strength. He can disguise himself to look like any person he can imagine and is invisible to the wall crawler's protective spider sense. But Venom is vulnerable to fire, and loud noise can shred the symbiote right off Eddie Brock's back. There's no window of any sort on the front of the packaging. The figure is held in the box by these plastic ties. So I think it's time to go ahead and bust this figure out of the package and take a look at the loose details. And here is the Lethal Protector out of the package and ready to rumble. Even 17 years later, with many innovations having happened in that time, I still think this is one of the best Venom figures available to collectors. So let's go ahead and have a closer look at the details now. So let's have a look at the lower body here. And I really like the work that went into this. I really think this is the superior figure because as you can see, that blue wash on this version really highlights all the musculature. And I just really appreciate that. You can see here on the feet, you see these veins that have been sculpted in. I really appreciate that. Here's a look at the back of the legs. As you can see, here's that blue wash again. There's also the swivel right under the calf muscles, so that gives you posing options. Makes the figure a little bit more sturdy. There's 27 points of articulation, one of which is the ankles here. You can see movement in the ankles, so I certainly appreciate that. As far as the rest of the lower body goes, we get double jointed knees. You can get them to go back that far, so I certainly appreciate that. We also get this swivel here, the upper part of the quadriceps, which helps with posing, but if you articulate them out like that, it looks a little weird because the muscles no longer line up. Now, the hips are a bit questionable. You can get the figure to kick forward that much, but it's at an angle. You can't get him to kick straight forward. There's no hinge here in the hip, so you can't get him to kick to the side at all. You can get the figure to step back a little bit. It does look a little weird, but I'm appreciative of that. So I would say that the hips are a mixed bag. So here's a look at the torso. Over the years, various creators have drawn Venom in different ways in terms of the musculature. Obviously, his creator, Todd McFarlane, in terms of the visuals, that is, he drew Venom very big and very thick. This is a little bit leaner you know, kind of more gangly Venom. I still do like it, but I do prefer Venom, you know, to be bigger than this. But there's still good musculature here. You can see the abdominals there. You do get this lower abdomen swivel, so I appreciate that. I will say, though, however, at least for mine, I can't get a lot of movement out of the upper torso swivel here. Not much at all. And maybe it's supposed to do more, but I don't want to try to force it and break the figure. In terms of the spider logo, I really like how this has been done. And this is also where that blue wash 
comes in handy. I just really think it makes the spider pop. It's very understated, but it gives it more depth. And yeah, I really like that. Here's a look at the back. And again, same rules apply. You get some veins back here. See a little bit of the spinal cord right there. And there's the rest of the spider logo. I certainly like that. And I like that it connects underneath the figure here. So as far as the torso goes, overall, just a really superb job by Toy Biz. Now let's have a look at the arms, and there's a lot to like here. First of all, we get all these veins sculpted in. I certainly like that. Double-jointed elbows. I really like the way that looks. Again, good musculature. These are more like the arms I expect out of Eddie Brock. You know, very big and thick. They are very long, but I do like that, especially like these ghoulish hands, like he's reaching out to snatch somebody. Also, good articulation here in the... In the wrist, you get this hinge here, so that gives you good posing options, as well as this swivel here in the forearms. I really like that. In terms of shoulder articulation, you can get them to go around 360 degrees, but much like the hips, there's no hinge here, so you can't get the arms to go out at all. So I certainly would have preferred a little bit better job by Toy Biz there. Now let's have a look at the head sculpt here. And in terms of aesthetics, I think this is outstanding. So I like how the eyes look. You get this little like black wash that's been given into the white sections to give it a little bit of depth. You can see how reflective they are. I really like that. I like the wrinkles sculpted into the forehead. I like all, you know, the green ooze, the green slobber on the teeth. I really like that. Tongue looks really good. I would have preferred like to be able to remove it as well, but that's just a minor criticism. So you can get him to kind of swing his head side to side, but if you do more than this, this is where the articulation gets really weird. You actually can't get him to look like over his shoulder or behind. His head just kind of goes upside down. Um, <laughs> so that is very bizarre. Uh, again, that's pretty much all the articulation on the head. You can get him to look down just a tiny bit, but that's pretty much your only options there is straightforward or kind of side to side like that. Because again, it just goes straight upside down. That's really weird when it comes to that, but I can't complain because I'm somebody who just likes to vanilla pose my figures. If you're somebody who likes to do dynamic posing, you may be a little disappointed. So here is how this figure stacks up against other Venom figures in this scale. Here is the Titan Hero series Venom from Hasbro, as well as the Toy Biz Marvel Legends Icon series Venom. By the way, I have reviews on both of these figures here on my YouTube channel, so go ahead and check those out. I certainly hope you have enjoyed this review. If so, please like, subscribe, and tell a friend to do the same. Stay tuned at the end of the video for some articulation shots. And also remember to catch me on the Multiverse Musings vidcast available right here on YouTube. And I'll be back to the internet with more comic book related content soon. But until we meet again, this has been the Emerald Enthusiast, and thanks for watching. <laughs>